What should we like to talk about? Yes, sir. Uh, I've been staying in the school for over eight years now. I've been staying in the school for over eight years now. And I've listened to some of your earlier talks. You say this, that the complete development of the individual is the most important thing. But I don't think the school is providing the ideal atmosphere for such a thing to happen. He says he has stayed here for eight years. And you have said that the complete development of the human being is the most important thing, but... The school has not provided it. The school has not provided the ambiance, is it, or the atmosphere for that? The ideal is atmosphere for that. It has not provided the ideal atmosphere for that. The school has not provided the proper education, proper development of the human mind. That's a question, isn't it? Any other question? Any more question? The school has not provided proper, not only ambiance environment, but also has not helped each human being, each one of you, to cultivate the whole of your being. Right, sir? And the other question is, where does one draw the line between knowledge and freedom from knowledge? Right? Yeah. Any more questions? Why do you place so much importance to words? Why do we place so much importance to words? Why do we place give so much importance to words? Thank you. Anything else? A pattern. A passion. A passion. If it does not die. All right, I've got it. Is there a passion which doesn't wither away after a while? Right. I'll answer all those questions presently. May I ask you a question? Are you all happy here? Yes, sir. Now, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute, so, so he can. Are you all happy? Wait a minute, I'll tell you what I mean by happiness. Do you look at the birds? Do you look at all the trees? The plants, the flowers? Those hills, which are the oldest hills in the world, one of the oldest. Do you look at the 
moon in the evening? Do you? Not quite. Do you look at the evening star when there is no other star in the sky? Do you? Or are you only concerned with books? Would you answer that question? Are you only concerned with the books that your teacher, your educator puts before you? Or do you look at all this world, most extraordinary world it is, the beauty of the skies in the evening? Do you? Huh? Do each one of you look at it? Or are you too occupied with your books, with your worries, with your play, with your amusement? I'm asking a question. Would the older boys be good enough to answer that question? And girls? Most of us are preoccupied with the books. What's up? Most of us are preoccupied with the books. He says many of the senior boys are preoccupied. Yeah, with preoccupied books. with books. So you neglect all this. And you call that happiness? You call that being happy when you're only concerned with books? Have you ever considered what happens to your brain when you're only concerned with books? Have you? Have you ever given thought to the state of your brain, mind, your capacity to observe? When you're, <coughs> when you're only concerned with what was printed in a book, Don't your teachers tell you to look at the birds, to look at trees? So books have become very important. Yes, Why? There seems, there seems to be no other way of You have to pass examinations. So you're only concerned with examinations. No, I have to get a job. Huh? He has to get a job when he grows big. You have to get a job, and so you have to pass examinations. And do you know how many people are after that one job that you want? You understand my question? I pass from the school to college, university. And I pass some kind of examination with a few alphabets after my name. Do you know how many people are at it? 
for one job, there were 10,000 people for our one job, right? Are you aware of this? Yes, sir? Yes, I didn't say you shouldn't pass examinations. I said, are you aware of it? Are you aware that after you have passed your examinations, BA, MA, PhD, or whatever it is, that there are so many other people for after that job, after any job? Are you aware of this? Are you? Yes? In order to compete with them, you have to do and perform well in the exams. I'm asking a different question, lady. I'm asking, are you aware, after you have passed your exams, that when you seek one job, your particular job, your particular work, there are thousands after that work? Are you aware of it? Huh? What do you say? Yes, sir? Do you know how dangerous it is that you may not get your job what you want? So what are you going to do? You live here. If you are lucky, you go to college. Then after that, university. Then you search for a job. Your uncle or your father or your some kind of distant relative pulls wires, and you may get a job if you are lucky. But if you don't, what will you do? Most people don't. You understand what I'm saying? Then what will you do? Come on, sir. See, you don't think far enough. You just think of your own passing some beastly examination and then lost, right? Then what will you do? What good has your examinations been if you don't get a job? He says he studies hard to avoid that possibility. He's saying the same thing as the other So you are studying hard to avoid that possibility. What about the other people who don't get a job? For them the examination is useless. What? For them it has been useless. For, the, for them the exams are useless. useless. If they don't get jobs. If you don't get a job, will the examination be useless? Not for them, for you. He says it would be useless for him too because he is doing the exams for the job. My God, this is the school that you are producing. What? <coughs> You're only concerned about yourself, aren't you? Right? Right, sir? Yes, sir. Be honest. Yes, sir. Good. You're only concerned about yourself. As long as you get a job, you hope to be secure. <coughs> Enough money, marriage, children, and a house. 
And that's all you are concerned about, aren't you? Be honest. Honestly, I'm not, sir. What? That's what science. He says, honestly, he is not. In his case, he is not concerned about those things, but that is generally what is happening. So, what are you concerned about? Said there is so much of misery in this world. So you're concerned with misery, are you? What are you going to do about it? Right now I'm very confused about it, sir. I don't know whether I can do anything about it or not. I wish I could understand your English. He says he's confused about it. He's not sure what he can do about the misery in this world. Where do you start? to understand the misery of the world. <coughs> Is the world outside there different from you? Sir, I think you have to start from yourself. Huh? I think if you want to do something about what's happening outside, then you have to do something about yourself. Says, I I Do you start about yourself, or just those are just words? I think, sir, it's more words. Who's that gentleman? Did you say what? I think it's more of words. It's more than words. It's more of words. He says he's a student. It's more of words. Just words. More of them. <laughs> or do you mean more than words? More off words. Some more, you add some more words to already, the words you already know. What kind of school is this? Would you tell me? It's like any other school situated in a... It's like any other school and what else? Just like another school and then? Situated in a beautiful valley. <laughs> so you speak so much about change, sir, but here actually there's things are very much at a superficial level. Sir. I asked you a question at the beginning. Are you happy here? Because it's very important to be happy when you are very young. Isn't it? It depends on what you would call happiness. I explained, sir. What do you call happiness? For me, it has come to me. What? For me, it has come to me something that is just passing. He says for him, happiness is something that is passing, just passing. Yes. So, are you so happy? So I ask you also, if I may, what would you like me to talk about? You put three questions. What place has knowledge? And the division between knowledge and freedom. Right? And so on. What would you like me to talk about? What are you interested in? Books? 
exams? Is that all what you are interested in? Would you kindly tell me? How will you find out? Are you waiting for somebody to tell you? I'm not waiting for somebody to tell Therefore, how will you find out what you are really deeply interest, interested in? He also asked a question. Is there a passion that doesn't die away? What do you call passion? What is passion to you? Passion to paint? Passion to be first-class carpenter? first-class scientist, not just pass some little examination that tells you are a scientist, but to have passion behind it, vitality, energy, drive. Are you, have you passion for anything? to be very well dressed. <laughs> passion to be the most really religious man. Do you have any passion? And you also asked a question about the division in knowledge. What is knowledge? Have you ever asked yourself what is knowledge? Somebody raised that question. What is knowledge? Not only learning from books, but also watching, watching the movement of the leaves, watching the hills, watching the trees grow, how the birds fly, by watching, not by learning from a book. So what is knowledge? I wish you would discuss it with me, would you? What to you is knowledge? Sir, knowledge is our experience. Huh? Knowledge is, is experience. All right. Knowledge comes from experience, does it? Yes. Right. Now, what is experience? You drive along in a car rather fast and you have an accident. I hope you don't, but people do. And that is an experience, isn't it? You have an experience when you go to a hospital being sick, right? You have an experience 
when there is a thunderstorm, right? You have an experience when you learn something new, right? You have an experience when you see or feel something that you never felt before, right? So all these are various forms of experiences. Now what do you learn from those experiences? <coughs> to avoid an accident, right? To observe the light on the leaf and watch it very carefully. So all that all those experiences leave a record which is called knowledge, right? Would you agree to that? Yes. Well, sir, all of you, do you agree to that? Yes. Right. Then what happens? You have knowledge of an accident, you have knowledge of a hospital where you've been sick, you have knowledge of meeting, seeing something totally new. So what happens after that knowledge? You have learned or been taught mathematics. You have watched the, you have learned from the books, you have watched you have listened to the, your educator and you have gathered information, right? Right? And that you call knowledge. That knowledge is stored in the brain, isn't it? Right? Agree? <laughs> and what happens after that? How do you apply that knowledge? I have learned, I have been apprenticed to a carpenter, master carpenter. He has taught me how to use the instruments to feel the quality of the wood and so on. For a few years I've studied, I've learned, and that learning becomes the knowledge, and I'm going to use that knowledge, right? Right? Now, what happens between knowledge before action? I think, think with me, learn from me. Don't just answer it, learn. I have seen experience, I see from experience there is knowledge, but before that knowledge is put into action, what takes place? Huh? Says thought operates. Thought operates, right. You follow, look what happens. Experience, knowledge, thought, and action, right? Have you got that? I have an experience. From that experience, I gather a great deal of knowledge. Then I think how to put that knowledge into action. So, experience, knowledge, memory, right? Then thought, then action. From that action you learn more, right? All that is the process of knowledge, thought, and action. 
That's clear? You have learned in the school if you have great deal of information as knowledge about engineering. You go to college, there you've learned much more about engineering, mathematics, pressure and so on. Then you go to university, there you are also getting more and more knowledge, and then you get a job, if you are lucky, then you operate skillfully or not skillfully according to the knowledge that you have acquired, right? Is that clear? Huh? Have you understood that? Now, just a minute. I've explained. I've put into words what actually goes on in the brain. Now, do you see that for yourself, the fact of that, or you have made an idea of it? You understand? I think I understand it. No, you don't. All right. First of all, do you see the difference between the word and the thing? The word microphone, right? is not the microphone. Have you understood that? No, no, don't say yes unless you completely understand this. The word is not the thing. You come out here. He is saying the properties of matter, which you see, is not the thing. Come and sit down, sir. Are the properties which we see? Be simple with me. Not the property we see. What do we do see? You see that that clock. You see that pillar. You see that tree. Hmm? Go on. The, the word clock is not the actual thing. But we are seeing. On yeah, have you understood what I say? <coughs> how can you say? I mean, how can you say it's not that thing? Not how can I? The word clock, C R O C K, clock, is not the actual clock, the thing. The word is not the thing. The word fa your father, the word father, is not actually your father. Yes, sir. that word only creates no, a see, picture of what it that is. First, see, the word is not the thing. Huh? It's almost synonymous with the thing. Huh? <coughs> almost synonymous with the thing. When we say in the word, I mean, the word and the thing don't have very subtle difference in that. But first, sir, see the. F it may be synthesis, it may be this. But see the difference how our mind works. The word, say clock, you immediately imagine that, right? We don't separate the word from the thing. Yes. Right? Right? So we are all the while caught what, up in what's this. What's your name? Sapan. 
Sapan. Sapan. All right. The word sapan is not you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Though that indicates you, that describes you, but the description is not you. I describe the mountain. I paint the mountain. I write a poem out the mountain. But the poem, the description, the picture is not the actual mountain. Got it? Yes, sir. You're sure? Yes. Quite? <laughs> so then the question arises as to what is the mountain? What is a, what am I? I'm not asking what you are. You may be a cuckoo. <laughs> but I am asking you a very simple fa question. The mountain, the word mountain, is not the actual rock, the tree, all that. Right? <coughs> Do you agree to that? I agree to that. Good, I'm glad. So, next is, the knowledge that you have acquired, right, through experience, knowledge, memory, thought, all that is part of you, isn't it? Right? Right? Yes, sir. Now, the question was asked, is there freedom or division between knowledge and non-knowledge? This is rather difficult. You won't. <laughs> no. You have acquired a great deal of knowledge from books, right? What other people have said. Agreed? And you repeat that for the rest of your life, don't you? Getting a little more or a little less, but you keep on repeating that. Right? So what happens to you, to your brain? It's not your own. Huh? Which means what? Which means go on, sir, inquire. No, what does that mean? That you are all second hand human beings. Right? Right? He doesn't like to say that. He doesn't like to acknowledge that he's a second hand human being. What's that? He says, if he, has, if he had to discover all the knowledge that is given to him, it would take ages. I don't quite follow you. If, if he has to pick up all the knowledge himself, of course not. It will take ages. You won't take, probably it will take a thousand years. But see the point that as long as we are learning fr about something from others. Uh, say, for example, if you want to be a scientist, you have to study all the previous scientists and their discoveries. All this knowledge is stored up, right, in books, by your study, it's there in your mind. You can't start right from the beginning to discover what science says. Other people have discovered it. And so you learn about it. And you repeat what other people have said. Right? Right? Do you agree to all that? Do you? Don't be shy. That's what you're doing, old boys. Oh, what's wrong doing that? You're like a machine, aren't you? If you keep on repeating, repeating what other people have said, 
You just like a machine going round and round and round. Well, I certainly don't have the feeling that I'm a machine. Of course not. Of course not. You don't have the feeling that you are a machine. But you are. You don't like to think you are a machine. You are probably you are studying, I don't know what you are studying. Suppose you are studying mathematics and that's your subject in which you are going to pass your examinations. And you become a professor in mathematics in some unfortunate university. And what happens? You repeat what you have learned, right? And you tell the other students to repeat what they have learned. So you gradually, your mind, your brain becomes mechanical, like a machine going around and around and around. You may discover something in going round and round, but it's still round and round. Agree? Yes, sir. I'm quite sure. <laughs> so, if I were going to become a mathematics professor, I would go about just all my all 24 hours. I would just teach mathematics. There's so many other things I could do. Huh? He if says he. Yes. When he becomes a mathematics professor, he won't be doing mathematics only 24 hours. No, of course not. He'll be doing other interesting things as well. You will doing other interesting things, which means you are not interested in mathematics. <laughs> so you realize what is what you are what you are doing with your life, with your life. School, college, university, passing some exams, adding some alphabets after your name, and for the rest of your life you pa you do this. Is there any, any alternative to it? What? He says, what is the alternative? Do you want to find out? Do you want to learn about it? Do you? Seriously? Will you give as much time as you have done to these to study mathematics or to your study? Or are you just a passing interest? Huh? You want the al alternative. I'll tell you what the alternative is, but we must give time to it, won't you? Right? Will you? So you just are asking what is the alternative, because it doesn't matter. What matters is exams, title, Job. Sir, but even that alternative is again in the you are going to do the same thing. Once you say that you want an alternative, you are still in the field of knowledge and that's right. Quite right. Field of knowledge. So you move from one knowledge to the other, which becomes Knowledge is the same. Yes. So, do you want to find out how to live a life where knowledge is necessary, where knowledge is not necessary? Knowledge is necessary if you are a carpenter. Knowledge is necessary if you want to drive a car. Knowledge is necessary if you want to be a businessman or an engineer or some crook. Right? Yes. Knowledge is all necessary there. <coughs> now, find out, find out where knowledge is not necessary 
or may not be necessary. Find out. Exercise your brain to find out. Do you understand my question? Yes, sir. All my life I have worked in this field. I go from one corner to the other and I think I'm free. <laughs> but it's still in the same field, right? Now, I realize that. That's not freedom. It's like a donkey tied to a tether. He thinks he's very, very free because he's got that length of rope. But it's not free. Right? So I have to ask if there is freedom first, which means freedom from this. Right? Yes, sir. Now, how will you find out? Well, there isn't any freedom from that. Huh? There is that freedom. I mean, the prime importance is passing school, getting a job, and being secure in life. I mean, Excuse me? The prime thing is to pass exams, get a job, and feel secure. Where is freedom from this? That's what I'm asking, sir. There is no freedom from this. As long as you want that, there is no freedom from it. You understand? As long as I want a job, I want a good job, money, house, family, I'm stuck there. If I want freedom, I have to inquire, right? I have to say, what is freedom? From what? You have to, you have to inquire from what you want to get freedom from. from That's right. First, freedom from, right? Yes. Now, I'm, I'm violent. I want to be free from violence. Hmm? That's one. I want to be free from pain. <coughs> I want to be free from <coughs> public opinion, which none of you want, right? Right, sir? Public opinion matters very much to you, doesn't it? <coughs> uh, agree? But you don't want to be free from that, do you? You're frightened. <coughs> what people might say about you. Have you heard of Bernard Shaw? Huh? The writer, he's dead. He had over his mental peace, people say, let them say. You understand? You understood? Yes, sir. Do you understand that, is, that? That is again an escape from what people are saying. No, no, boy. <laughs> You know, people say all kinds of things, right? Suppose, all right, people say all kinds of things about me. Who cares? They might say good things, they might say bad things, they might be, want to say things to hurt you. Let them say what they want. Who cares? But you all do. Yes, sir. Why? What? Hmm? what the word that we figure for ourselves, we want such a word again. What I previously said, we want the security, we want the job. The word that we figure for ourselves, public opinion is also a prime importance. He says the world which he has figured for himself, public opinion is also an important factor. Of course. Apart from, apart from job and security. So, are you frightened of public opinion? Of course you are. You don't even know about it. Sir, is there, any, is there life after death? Oh, gee. <laughs> 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 
Why are you, why are we all laughing? Because a little boy asked, what happens after death? <laughs> we'll talk about it another time. But now we are talking of what happens before death, not after. <laughs> Right. <laughs> some people say, uh, some people who gone to hospitals uh, when they were dying, and they brought back the life, they, uh, they said they've seen a long tunnel and they went through it and saw all their friends shouting uh, at the other end of the tunnel. What is that? It says people who have been dying and rescued from death, when they come back they say, they went to a tunnel the and came. End, and the other end they found their friends <laughs> shouting at them. <laughs> Look, don't talk about death now. We'll do it another time. <laughs> Let's talk about what happens before we die, shall we? Uh, right. <laughs> Have you ever looked at yourself? Apart from the mirror, I don't mean that. <laughs> Have you looked at yourself? Have you? Yes, sir, but all the time I've always been uh, forming images about myself that I'm this and I'm that, and it does not get me anywhere. I agree. Now, why do you have images about yourself? Can you listen to what I asked my question? Can you look at yourself without? any image. Or look at yourself who are the maker of images. Or can you look at the image that you have made about yourself? This applies to all of us. Huh? Can you look at yourself which is your image, look at it. Can you look can you look at your image that you have made yourself of yourself? God strongly embedded in him. So you are the image, are you? Right? Right, sir? Do you agree to that? Silence. You make a statement that your image is strongly embedded and I say, look at that strongly embedded image. Can you? I see you are not used to think things out for yourself, right? I don't. Uh... Everything seems to go blank. I know. Why? How old are you? Fifteen. Remain fifteen, nice. Don't grow old.
We've talked for an hour. Is that enough? Is that enough? Yes. The voice says yes. Is that enough? What do you say? I don't oh, think you answered a single question, sir. What? I don't think you answered a single question. He says you have not answered a single question. Of course not. I have not answered a single question, that boy says. Why? I am not escaping, I am not avoiding. I can answer all your questions. But I haven't answered them, because I want you to think it out for yourself. I can help you to think it out. But you see, you are used to being... You ask a question, and somebody answers it. So you have stopped questioning yourself, right? Where if I say, look, You've asked a question, like passion, like knowledge. Inquire into it, look into it. Exercise your mind to understand it. Not what I say, but find out. That way you have a good brain. But if I say, well, Passion is this, or the end of knowledge, and so on. If I explain it all very carefully, which I will, I'm not frightened of explanation, but at the end of it, what will you do? You will repeat that explanation, right? Whereas if you, if you and I can think together, explore together, Find out, learn. But you're not doing that. Your mind, your brains are used to being told what to do, how to think. But I don't want to do that. I want to, if we can, help each other to find out, to learn about things anew, fresh. Is that enough for an hour, Narayan? Huh? Is that enough, sir? Yes, sir. Huh? We can continue. <laughs> Poor chap. He says, you can continue in a meek voice. <laughs> I think that's enough for this morning. Will you sit quietly for two or three minutes? Absolutely quiet. Keep your eyes closed. Don't let your body move, twist fingers. Just sit absolutely quiet.
Church.